we're covering a whole slew of different horror effects today as we put together a classic vampire photo effect. I'm Abby Sparza and I've been creating uh, creative composites for over 10 years now and I am a mega fan of all things horror. All resources featured today can be found over on Envato Elements where you get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, all with super simple commercial licensing. Plus, no lock-in contract means that you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now with the link down in the description. We're jumping right into things today, already having done my background and color grade. However, if you want to follow along step by step, then you can find the link to the written version down in the description, and that'll show you how I whipped up uh, the background and color grade. Otherwise, let's just start by placing our subject. Extract them using whatever your preferred method is. Subject select and a layer mask worked out perfectly fine in this case, uh, super quick as well. We can give our subject a bit more a uh, vampire appropriate outfit using a gradient map clipped into the subject and masked to turn just the sweatshirt black going from a dark black to a mid to darker gray tone here. Now we also want to add uh, some shadows to the left side of the face. My all time favorite way to add deep shadows onto an otherwise Bright subject is to create and clip a color fill layer, set to multiply into that subject, and then set the opacity to around 50% depending on just how dark you want those shadows to be. Then we can bring back some of the highlights using Blendif found in the layer styles panel. You can set it to something like what I end up with, though Blendif settings will never need to be exact and will change drastically from image to image. And then we can just mask out any areas uh, we don't want to be covered in that shadow. You can also invert the layer mask using Control i and then mask back in the shadows if you want to be a bit more uh, precise with their placement. Now onto the best part, the vampire teeth, right? Uh, first duplicate your subject and clip that duplicate into the original subject. Go ahead and name the duplicate fangs. Now let's go into filter liquify. We're going to push and pull the teeth we want to become fangs. I'm doing the classic canines here. However, you can make any tooth into a nice sharp fang. Don't worry about overly warping the tooth or the surrounding teeth and tongue. Just focus on getting the ideal fang shape, uh, no matter how much warping needs to be done. If you're having trouble getting it to be nice and sharp, don't worry about that either. We will be able to make some final shape adjustments here coming up. Now that we're happy with the shape, uh, let's right click and convert to smart object, adding a layer mask and inverting that layer mask using control I. And using a hard drawn brush, we're just going to bring back the fangs. This doesn't have to be an exact mask, just make sure all of the fangs and their surrounding areas are masked back in. Now that they are brought back, we can go back in with that same hard round brush and refine the edges of the fangs, masking out any areas of the tongue or mouth that are overly warped. You can also use this step to add a super sharp point to your fangs. Adding a point to the fang using a hard round brush can be much easier than the warp tool. Now if the pixels on the fangs themselves are stretched and notably warped, adding a small amount of filter sharpen smart sharpen and a filter noise add noise can help hide it. Both are optional but can help hide stretched or blurry pixels caused by the liquify filter. And we're going to finish off those fangs with some added contour uh, using a new layer clipped above the fangs layer and set to soft light. Add some highlights using white and some shadows using black. Lower the opacity of the layer so that the effect isn't too strong. We're really just trying to uh, match the fangs to the contrast and brightness of the surrounding teeth. Often liquify will kind of remove some of the uh, shape of the tooth making them seem a little flat. This by far is my favorite way to get nice sharp fangs without the obvious overly warped and stretched pixels. Now 
Next up, let's add some paleness to the skin, as well as a super quick glowing eye effect. Starting with the skin, create and clip a brightness contrast adjustment layer into the subject above the current uh, clipped layers. We're going to set that layer to a brightness of 22 and a contrast of negative 33. But these types of settings will always change from subject to subject. We're going to mask out any areas that you don't want to be brightened, like their shirt and mouth. Now let's create and clip a black and white gradient map adjustment layer into the subject, uh, setting the opacity to 25% or possibly less. Uh, copy the brightness contrast layer mask onto the gradient map. You could mask things out by hand, but copying one layer mask onto the other is a great way to save some time, since we want these two layers to affect the same areas. If you still feel your subject is a bit too dark, you can clip a curves layer into the subject, bringing up the mid-tones. You don't want to over lighten the subject. We want to keep the subject's original skin tone, but just make it paler. Now onto the eyes. Let's start by creating a new layer set to multiply. On this layer, we're going to fill the eyes in with flat black. Next, we need to bring the highlights of the eyes back, a job a Blendif was pretty much made for. A move the slider so that only the lightest parts of the highlights on the eyes show, kind of the watery bits. Again, replicate something like what I end up having, but always keep in mind that a Blendif is very image dependent and there's just no magic one size fits all setting. Now we can create a new layer set to screen and use a hard round brush to create a two red circles over the subject's iris. Make sure and double check the placement of your iris by switching the uh, black multiply layer off and then back on again, just to keep things aligned. And then we can use a large soft eraser brush or a layer mask uh, to make those circles a little less harsh giving almost a glassy eye effect. And then we can uh, repeat those same steps to create a smaller red pupil inside of that red iris. This will give the eye much more depth and detail. And while I'm using red, uh, this is a great easy glowing eye effect that can be done in literally any color and applied to also a non-black eye as well. It's a great fantasy eye effect. Now all vampires need at least a little bit of blood. So let's create a new layer set to multiply and paint some dripping blood shapes coming from the mouth and fangs of our subject. I'm using a medium red color, but you might need to go a little lighter or darker depending on your image's color grade and what you're exactly painting blood on. Using a mix of a few different reds is an excellent idea as well. Along with looking at references of dripping blood, and I just used a default hard round brush for my brush tip. Uh, no need to overcomplicate things. Dripping blood is very easy to paint even if you uh, don't consider yourself a painter because I definitely don't consider myself a good painter. Once we are happy with that shape, uh, we want to add some dimension to our dripping blood by creating and clipping a new layer into the blood drip and placing a lighter red color around the edges. Uh, so the way blood works, uh, the more blood, the darker the blood. The more blood thins out, the lighter it will appear. So if you have a thick drop of blood or a place where blood is pooling, you want that area to be nice and dark, while the surrounding areas or any trails of leftover blood will be lighter. Again, looking at references will help a ton here. And we can also add in some thin splatters of blood around the teeth and gums using a new layer set to overlay. Again, paint red just anywhere you want some blood. 
This blood will appear thinner and less opaque and is there to uh, mostly complement the thicker streams of blood. And once happy with the kind of base layer of blood, we can create a new layer and use a hard round brush just to paint little white dots of highlights over those blood drips. You want these dots to be imperfect and follow the shape of the blood. Use an eraser brush if the dots and lines look a little too harsh, and you can also try lowering the layer's opacity. I also added in some shadows below the blood drips using a new layer set to multiply and a soft round brush set to that same exact red tone we used to paint the blood. Adding shadows is optional, but it does add um, a lot more depth to the blood itself. And we can finish off the blood with a small amount of red set to screen, adding some shine to parts of the blood drips. This part is also optional and mainly brings some light and vibrancy to blood if it's overly dark. Now let's finish off our vampire's skin by adding some nice grungy dark face paint. This is my go-to layer setup for any kind of face paint or even makeup effect. Especially when you want it to be very sloppy and almost primal, I guess. First, a black and white gradient map adjustment layer placed over your subject but below the blood layers. And then a brightness contrast adjustment layer, bringing down the brightness to negative 1 to 5, as in 125, and the contrast up to 30. And we're going to use a blend if to remove the darkness of the highlights, replicating something like what you see here. We don't want to kill the highlights of the face. Once we're happy with the base layers, we can group those layers together, adding a layer mask to that group and inverting the layer mask using Control i And then we're going to use that mask to place the dark face paint wherever you'd like. You can also use any brush you'd like, though grungy brushes work particularly well here. You can also use this layer to darken parts of your blood, parts of the subject's teeth, anywhere you want to add a bit more contrast. Finally, onto the lighting, uh, starting with duplicating the subject layer, bringing it below the original, and setting the duplicate to screen. Then we're going to create and clip a medium red color fill layer into that duplicate subject. Then let's warp that duplicate so that only parts of the red is just peeking right from behind the original subject, creating a rim light effect. Now, if you need to tone down some of the rim light in certain areas, which you most likely will need to, uh, group the two layers together and add a layer mask to that group. Use that mask to remove any overly bright areas or taper out the edges of rim light. And let's finish off the whole image by adding blooms of a red light set to screen. Place the light on new layers both below and above the subject, and use a large soft round brush set to a low flow rate, so you can build that light up slowly. Also add some light to the subject themselves using clipped layers. Also set to screen, and you can also try out color dodge. Basically, we want to both add ambient red light, as well as enhance the current rim light. 
And that is how to create a vampire in Photoshop. Remember, these effects from the vampire makeup and skin effects to the glowing eyes and fangs are vamp exclusive. You can create all kinds of monsters with any number of these effects. And if that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other videos that Envato Test Plus has to offer. If you liked this video, uh, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and of course, tutorials. Happy designing. See you next time.